John here, guys, and today we're talking about the final buildup of the X Hover Vanover Edition. The champ is here! The champ is here! The champ is here! Finally, I was able to get some time to build this up uh, for Jason, local member of the Houston crew. He was gracious enough to allow me to borrow um, this frame from him. Uh, in exchange, I'd go ahead and build it up and assemble the components um, together for the build. And so I'm actually using the 20 by 20 Acon 6S stack that I had on the channel um, a few weeks ago. This was a tight build. Um, but once I kind of got it laid out, everything went together pretty well. Now take a look at these little arm wire slots at the front and the back. That really makes for a nice clean build. I think I'm gonna also apply some zip ties to the front and the back just to anchor those wires in place. Fast, last night I cut the light off in my bedroom, hit the switch, was in the bed before the room was dark. Incredible. Fast. And you can see them running on the underside of the frame, very well protected on those wires. Um, I am running the, it came with a small size cap, so I'm running that cap and the video was very nice and clear when I test flew it. This is running a brand new set of Hyperlite 2207 1722 KV. Those are one of my favorite motors of all time. Uh, so much power, so smooth, a very nice linear power curve that will really blast you off to the moon if you get on the throttle. Now on my builds where I run this uh, set of motors, on my 6S builds, I do run an 80% throttle cutoff on my Tyrannus QX7S. Um, so if you're using these motors, you may want to do the same. Um, now this uh, 6S ESC, uh, the Acon, actually is plenty of room for full-size wires. So wiring up the motors to this was not a problem at all. Um, now the frame design is interesting because all three arms have a flat portion and they meet in the middle right here. And so you have a screw here and a screw here um, that hold those in. The flight control stack is on some gummies. Um, so there's some M3 screws in there going through some. Uh, now the nice thing about this is this is a 20 by 20 stack, yes, but it does use M3 hardware. Now I'm using these aluminum standoffy things that are gold and blue hyperlight colors. They're very cool that I got from Pyroflip. Um, they make this build really nice and clean and easy to do. Um, so I had been having those for a while and I was happy to find a, a way to be able to use them. Um, I had a couple of different VTX options I could have done. I did have the 20 by 20 FX3, but that one has a connector and it was getting a little close for comfort to the top plate. So I went ahead and went with the AKK Oscars backpack. Now that has a 16 by 16 mounting, so it doesn't really fit on the mounting holes, but I could easily just put a little zip tie on there and held it in nice and snug. Now, I may swap this out for an Axie stubby. That's what was promised for this build. Um, but I had these new Foxier Lollipop 2s in. Uh, this is the right-hand circular polarized. It is the neon yellow. And I wanted to test it out. And it worked great. Uh, very affordable. I think I got these for like 7 bucks each on Bangers. They come in a two for a pack. Um, so uh, that is a nice way you can save a couple bucks on a build. Because an Axie is 20 bucks. These are like 7 8 bucks if you get them on sale. So not bad. Rounding it out, I have an Xoom Plus receiver down at the front because as you can see, it's a little tight in there. Although there's plenty of room for the vertical stack itself, where can you put a receiver? Either back here, could maybe squish it in on the top, but I went ahead and just put it underneath the camera because there was a good amount of space there with a little bit of double-sided tape. Now, I'm using this new version of the Foxier Micro Aero Pro. Now, I'd used that camera personally for a very long time during the 2017 season, but I got off of it and switched to the Predator because the Predator had a wider field of view and super low latency. I never actually had any issues with the latency of the Micro Aero, but I didn't like the field of view as much as the Predator. The Predator was wider, but what they've started doing is they're now including a 1.8 lens on the Micro Aero Pro instead of the old 2.1. So the field of view that you get is very similar to the Predator now. Um, and that was my main complaint with it. So now it's like you can get a nice budget $20 camera that has the perfect field of view. The Micro Aero image is actually quite good. The colors re render um, very realistically. In fact, I a lot of scenarios, a lot of lighting scenarios, I prefer the image of this camera over the Predator. Now note, the light handling of this one isn't quite as good. And I suspect that's one of the reasons why it's cheaper. So if you're in super bright light, if you're flying at night, 
um, or something like that. This may not be the best camera for that, but most of the time we're flying in fairly good lighting conditions during the day, and this one's going to perform quite well. I also like that the 1.8 lens that comes on this um, is very short. Look how close it is to the casing of the camera. That means that this camera sits um, very far inside. A Predator would be sticking out a little bit more and maybe um, prone to some damage, but this allows it to sit much closer to the center of your craft. Now, um, you know, we talked about the capacitor that I have on there. I finally found on Amazon some three quarter inch heat shrink that can cover a capacitor with a small or with a with an XT60. Now, it doesn't work on the 1000 milliamps. I probably am going to need to buy some of the one inch uh, for that. That may be the right size, hopefully. Um, at first, I had the camera turned outside, but it does fit um, this way. So you get a little more protection. Um, you have just enough room with that stack. Now, the Akon um, has an interesting flight controller setup. The pads are a little small. They're larger than something like the Mamba mini micro stack. That is, you know, microscopic pads, but they're not as nicely large and luxurious as something like the Heli Nation Talon series. These are the gold standard for 20 by 20, but this is definitely serviceable and it works well. It wasn't hard at all to get it wired up. Um, now note on there, it says, it's not super clearly labeled on the instructions which one of these pads is for smart audio, but it is the one that is next to all the other VTX pads. I think it's down here in one of these corners and it's it's like SP1 or or something like that. If you look it up on the website, you'll be able to find it. Um, cause that, so I did have to look around for that a little bit, but it does come with some decent instructions. It's just not 100% clear on that. Everything else is easily laid out. Now this one has a bridge system on the pads for if you want full VBAT voltage or five volt. All you have to do is just solder that jumper together one way if you want 5 volt or the other way if you want VBAT. So what are some other notes? Make sure that you leave enough length for you to be able to run your wires in this fashion. Now I do like that. So if I, if you ever did move to a different frame, um, even though this frame is very compact because of how you have to run the wires, your wires are going to be plenty long enough to accommodate any frame out there. So that's just, you know, a little nice little bonus. Um, I happen to have this little carbon piece. It fits on the back standoff with some zip ties. I don't know where I got this from, but I had it in my box and it was perfect to be able to mount up this um, sort of a stubby style antenna. It does not come with this though. So you're gonna want to find some type of solution to find this. There may be a 3D printed one that you can find somewhere. Um, all in all though, very happy with this build. I did a very brief uh, test flight that I'll show at the end. I don't, it, since this is going to someone else, I'm not gonna just go out and try to race it or fly it too hard. Um, I think I'm probably gonna wait till I can catch Jason at a race day when he's flying it and DVR some of his footage. So hopefully I'll have that at the end to show you guys. Uh, but wow, a couple of firsts for this uh, build. First time using the Akon, first time using the X over Vanover edition. Really like this frame. I love that it has three motor holes uh, right there, or three motor screw holes. Um, fits very nicely. Um, I love that, uh, how light it is. This saves me about 14 or 15 grand versus my normal racing build, which uses a very similar setup. I use the same motors, same camera, same type of antenna on my campfire racing builds, but this one is a bit lighter and I felt like I could feel that difference in the air. It also has a sort of medium stretch and I really, really enjoy the medium stretch, guys. Uh, the campfire stretch is really extreme. This is closer to like your floss type of stretch, sort of a conservative stretch. Very, very nice. And it flies stupendous. So I'm really liking the Akon stack. We, even with the small capacitor that it comes with, it seems to be perfectly matched for it because the I was very surprised. The video seemed cleaner than my normal setups. And I usually run um, like the the Racer Star Anniversary or more recently the Furling, uh, both of those I run with the Hyperlite F4 uh, flight controller. But this was very clean in the video feed. So check it out, uh, the flight footage. Hope if, you, if you're curious about the frame, the stack, any of these things, all of these things are John approved. Love them all. Thanks, guys. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, you're not that pretty. I'm a bad man. I shook up the world.